it used to be thought that the brain could only be changed during the early stages of development, and that in adults not very much happens to it. Wrong! The brain is constantly changing. We continue to change it throughout our lives, depending on how we use it. And right now, if you learn something from this film, your brain will change a bit. Thanks to its 100 billion nerve cells, our brain can store information and forget or remember. But how does it do so? <laughs> Professor Bonhoeffer at the Max Planck Institute for Neurobiology is investigating these very questions. The brains of mice and rats will help provide an answer. He and his team aim to gather a better understanding of the processes taking place inside our heads. They are searching for the secret behind learning and thinking. I want to understand the brain better, how we learn and how we store information. And looking into the future, of course, we hope that this will lead, for example, to a better understanding of psychiatric illnesses, like autism and schizophrenia. Only if we can understand the brain better will we be able to deal better with these illnesses. In their research, they are examining certain parts of the brain of mice, usually the hippocampus. This plays a central role in learning, because it is here that information from the sensory organs lands, is processed and transmitted to other regions of the brain. Thinking or feeling can only take place when nerve cells, known as neurons, are able to exchange information at the right time and in the right place via contacts, known as synapses. For this reason, the scientist's main interest focuses on the synapses. They want to find out whether the structure of nerve cells changes when we learn things. So they put mice into a new environment and show them a virtual world in which they need to find out where to go. Do the connections between the nerve cells change in order to react to the new surroundings? In other words, when they learn something? The scientists can indeed observe how electrical impulses rush through the nerve cells. When we learn, it is like a thunderstorm inside our heads. If lots of electrical impulses flow through the nerve cells, the transmission via the synapses is strengthened. But that is not all the neurobiologists discover. The neurons even create completely new connections, or processes known as spines. Communication is everything. As in a social network, the neurons create new connections. Then electrical and chemical signals can be passed on from one cell to the next. Every second, hundreds of these impulses are generated and passed on. Only cells which really belong together form a stable connection. For example, for a rose to be recognized correctly by the brain, many connections must be activated at the same time. Nerve cells become active simultaneously when they receive similar inputs. For example, when you see a rose and at the same time smell its perfume, the nerve cells concerned with smelling and seeing are both activated at the same time and then they create particularly strong connections. But how do nerve cells know which information belongs with which object? Like the rose, for example, and therefore whether it is worth establishing a new connection? Because scientists know that if spines or processes are formed indiscriminately, the brain will waste precious time and energy. The neurons in the brain use an effect that gives them information about their neighbors. When a neuron sends out an electrical impulse, the calcium concentration in the cell increases. A participant makes a request. But could he become a friend? Now calcium is introduced as an intermediary. Inquiries about interests are made. If the profile is too different, the connection will be removed again. It is much more efficient to look at the other person's profile first and then to establish the contact. The scientists first have to find the new connections among hundreds of thousands of synapses. Here I have an example. This is a cube representing the brain enlarged 1,000 times. And here you have a million little silver glittering particles, which are the connections between the nerve cells. You can see how closely packed it all is here. But in fact, everything which you see in this big cube needs to be packed into this cube too. And we try to see the changes occurring in the individual silver particles within this dense web. The method? 
They mark the cells they are looking for with different fluorescent dyes, usually red and green. They mark the transmitter and receptor nerve cells. The results are fantastic pictures. This one shows the brain cells of a mouse. This method only became available a few years ago thanks to innovative processes like two-photon microscopy. Some of them were developed at other Max Planck institutes. Since then, it has been possible to observe the changes in these tiny structures. In this way, researchers can look into the outer layers of the brain and watch the nerve cells rebuilding their synapses. Synapses change depending on how much they are needed. Each time an impulse runs along the nerve pathways, it leaves a little trace in the brain. If we use these pathways frequently, they become proper beaten tracks or even data highways. If the nerves are only rarely used, the connections disappear again. The brain forgets something it has once learned. But forgotten is not lost. Not all connections are completely destroyed. 10% of them remain and are, so to speak, switched onto standby. For example, we can relearn a language more easily because synapses were previously formed in the corresponding places in the brain. Neurobiologists recognize that the neurons in the brain are constantly being reformed. They call this permanent adaptation plasticity. But it can also be influenced externally. Could an understanding of the way nerve cells communicate with each other be the key to faster learning and understanding? And can we optimize our brains by means of chemicals? Just imagine if you only need a few hours learning for an exam instead of days or weeks, or you never forget what you learned. Personally, I'm a bit skeptical about that because it isn't always good merely to learn more. It is also important to forget things that are irrelevant. It can be a disadvantage not to be able to forget because our brains will be just bursting with information and in the end we would have gained nothing at all. The miracle in our heads. Our brain is constantly improving on itself. It learns by permanently adapting the relays between its nerve cells so that we can survive in a constantly changing environment.